Welcome to another Gibbs Cam version 2022 enhancement video. Today we're going to show you enhancements 6 through 10. The first one's going to be extrude surface. So you can see on my screen I have some 2D geometry. And there has always been in the surface mod, sorry, the saw modeling, the extrude. We select a shape. You can see this makes a saw body, but that's not what we're talking about on this. This is extrude a surface. So under the surface modeling, you have the new icon now. It says extrude. If I clicked on that, clicked on do it, you can see there is a sheet now. This is more for the Opticam EDM uh, product in Gibbs. And just to kind of show you because how this works, uh, the EDM, the new EDM works on uh, saw models and surface models. So if I was to run, say, a toolpath on here, for instance, and run the simulation on it, this up a little bit it works very well for EDM especially for starting holes things like that um, this is the new EDM so if you're still running the legacy EDM you can always upgrade to the new uh, EDM product which is uh, very nice uh, works right within the Gibbs GUI here so this is it for extrude surface shape number six so we'll go on to the next one is called multi-shape pre-drilling. So let's show you number seven. So on number seven, the multi-shape pre-drilling, in previous versions, 14 and older, when you wanted to do a pre-drill, so say you wanted to drill a hole in each one of these and then have the end mill go in, and contour these out, it would only work on one of the uh, pieces of geometry. In this case here, if I bring back the process, you can see my first process is pre-drill, well, pre-mill actually. Uh, you're drilling before milling, so that's why they call it pre-mill. You check this box, and what this does is it interacts with the second process to put a hole where the end mill is going to plunge. So, but you can see on here it only does the one hole, the one pre mill hole. And if I cut part render, just rewind it, you can see it drills once, does the end mill, but then all the rest of these, the end mill goes in there and uh, cuts it. But there's no pre drilling of the holes. So in 2000. 22 new version they enhanced that to allow pre-mill basically pre-drill all these shapes before you go in with the contour so let's switch over to 2022 and i'll show you that one so in 2022 they increased this enhancement to allow you to do multiple contours on a shape with a pre-mill pre-drill hole so let's just bring this back Let's bring back our processes. So here's my pre-mill. Check this box. Of course, put in your depths and speeds and feeds. And if I bring back the um, process of contouring, the pre-mill will interact with the contouring. So depending on where you put your entry and exit, the drill will drill where the end mill is going to plunge for this process. I have my uh, speeds and feeds here, but one thing you need to make sure you do is on the offset page, you need to tell it what you're going to cut. So normally the default is center line. Gibbs always goes down the center of the uh, um, geometry if you're selecting multiple uh, pieces of geometry, multiple contours. So you need to tell it you want to offset it either inside or outside, in this case inside, and that's all you need to do. And if you redo that, 
And if we do a cut part render, let's rewind it. You can see we're going to plunge. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. You're going to plunge with the drill each one of the slots there. And we're going to come back with the end mill and cut out the slots or any shape that you would like. This just doesn't work on just slots. It works on any piece of geometry that you want to use a contour on. So a very nice enhancement on the multi-shape pre-drilling. Our next enhancement, number eight, is going to be turn roughing square corners. This is for turning. So let's show you number eight, turn roughing square corners. Now on this enhancement that they've added to the process here, uh, normally when you're roughing out a part, even if you have sharp corners, say for instance here, Gibbs will give you a G2 or G3 to go around the corners. It'll still keep it sharp, but some people don't like the G2s, G3s. They want the code to be basically straight, straight, straight. So what they've added on here, and let's show you the uh, code here as well. So let's bring up our roughing process here. So there's a new button now that says square corners. If I uncheck that and redo this, and let's just show you the toolpath here, and you'll see the G2s and G3s. So here is just a longhand code. As you can see, there's some G3s in here. Uh, we're probably not going the opposite direction, otherwise there'd be some G2s in here as well, but you can see a number of G3s in this code here. Of course, when I do this, I like to have uh, prefer canned on. Let's redo that. But even with prefer canned on, you can still see there's some G3s in here as well. So what this does is eliminate the G2s and G3s. Uh, if you have sharp corners, of course, if you have round corners, it's going to give those out anyway. But if you have sharp corners and want sharp corners, you can click on this button. We'll redo that. And if I process, you're going to see these are all straight lines now. Shorter code. And for those that want sharp corners, there's some prints that call out sharp corners. This will help you quite a bit. So that is enhancement. Number eight, turn roughing square corners. Let's just do a rendering while we're at it. And there you go, uh, sharp corners, just like the model shows. Okay, that's it for turn roughing square corners. The next enhancement we're going to do is going to be multi-part. So enhancement number nine, multi-part. You can see I have one part here on the screen to do, but I'm doing actually multiple parts on a palette. If I go to my document control, You're going to see under multi-part, I have number of parts in X5 and Y5, and of course my offsets there in kind of a grid there. So what this is going to show you, if I go to my op sim and run this, you can see that operation there. Let me bring it back and show you again. Speed it up just a little bit. But this is multi-part, so now there's a new icon in here. And it says show multi-part. So if I click on that, you're going to see all the parts appear now. And you can see now it's doing multiple parts. So this is more of a visual representation of how your parts are going to run on your machine. Of course, you can 
separate these into multiple uh, work fixture offsets so these don't necessarily have to be laid out in this exact order. It depends on how you post process it and we'll go over some of those videos later on other videos. And so our last video is going to be number 10, show clearance. So the last enhancement is show clearance. Now you can see I have a part on here and I have my clearance at one inch. But I find a lot of times when people move part origins, especially when they bring in their solid model and the origin is way below the part and they move it up to here, they forget to look at this clearance because it'll uh, subtract that value from your clearance here so you might end up with a negative. So that's not good, but you can look in your uh, operation sim or your machine sim let me rewind this and if you turn this on this button right here and it says show clearance and planes volume so if you turn this on you're gonna see the clearance plane there I have it at one inch so you can see that very easily on there when you of course do your cut part render you can see if I change this down to let's say half inch, let's just make it a quarter inch there, be easier to see. You can see it drops down to quarter inch there. So very easy to see where your clearance planes are when you're cutting apart to help avoid mistakes. So this works on four and five axis as well as lathes. So let's bring over a lathe part and we'll show you that as well. So here I have a turned part here and of course, when you're drawing geometry, things like this, you can also turn on st show stock and origin. This is showing you the stock and the origin, but not necessarily the clearance volume. So if you go into the operation sim, cut part rendering, and you turn on this button here, it's going to show you your uh, clearance volume there. So let's rewind this a little bit. And we'll stop. And you can see my clearance volume right there the Z as well as the X if I went into my document control change this to say my stock is 6 and I have 6.1 there let's say I want to be a little more careful let's move that to 6.5 you're gonna see the clearance value there so this is gonna show you uh, as well on the lathe as well on milling You can see the cl uh, cut part clearance there changes depending on what operation it's doing and what coordinate system you're in. So it makes it a lot easier to find mistakes. So that's enhancement number 10 for Gibbs Cam 2022. Thanks for watching.